Well, I had a request for hummus. Someone asked if I would show them how I make my hummus. I've been making it for a long time and it really is good. But first, before we start on that, I'll show you how I make pita chips. These are really easy and you know pita bread does get to a point where you really can't make a sandwich out of it because it gets a little dry. So what you want to do is cut it up into triangles. I suppose you probably could cut it up into squares. And then what we're going to do is drizzle these with a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of garlic. Now for something like this, I really do like using granulated garlic or perhaps garlic salt. Granulated garlic, then you can control your own garlic as opposed to fresh because the fresh garlic is just a little too chunky and it'll get a little bit too burned. But anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on the bottom of the pan. I'm going to take this pita bread that I've just cut up and sort of toss it up on the pan. By doing this, you're going to get an even coat of the olive oil on the top of the pita and the bottom of the pita. And you could do this in a bowl, but you might as well do it on a sheet tray, and then you won't have an extra piece to wash. So there is one sheet tray. Now I'll do the next one. And then I'm going to put these into a 400 degree oven for probably about seven or so minutes until they get nice and golden. And these are perfect, of course, with vegetables too, but these are a perfect accompaniment to hummus. And hummus is really a good snack because it's a good source of protein, potassium, vitamin B. You know, it's just great stuff all the way around. And if you make it with real ingredients, not a lot of the food processors can use extra virgin olive oil because then it gets too pricey. And, you know, whether they can charge for it or not, I don't know. But in your Mediterranean countries, they do pride themselves on extra virgin olive oil and it adds quite a bit of flavor. So that's what I prefer to use because I like the flavor it adds. Okay, so it looks like I missed a few. So what I can do is just drizzle the top a little bit. All right, that's enough. Don't want them too much. One tray I'll do with garlic salt and the other I'll do with the granulated garlic. So evenly, one thing you do not want to do is go bam, you know, right on one spot of the bread because you want an even coating not something that is take a bite and get it all at once in your mouth so make sure that you're holding the container of your seasoning mix up high enough where you can actually get a beautiful even coat over each piece of bread now since that's just the granulated garlic then I'm gonna add a little bit of kosher salt to that and to one tray also I'm going to add just a little bit of sesame seed it plays on the hummus theme the tahini that gets added to it and it's really good so I will put these in the oven we'll look at them in about seven or eight minutes and see if they're golden and in the meantime I'll start the hummus now to make some hummus. This really is good stuff, especially if you make it yourself. The secret to making a good, nice, smooth hummus without any texture, shall we say, is to use a blender. A processor just will not work, I guarantee it. I've done it so many times. The blender gets a nice, smooth texture because there's more beets in the bottom of the bowl that processes the uh, chichi bean, chickpea, garbanzo bean, however way you want to call it. Into the bowl, you want to put your chichi beans or garbanzo beans. You want to put a little bit of the liquid that's in the can, if you're using can, in with the bean. So it gives it a um, little something to process with. 
And then you are going to add some lemon juice, fresh is nice. You're going to add some fresh garlic, a little bit of cumin, a little bit of salt, a lot of tahini, and a fair amount of extra virgin olive oil. Taste correct if necessary to thin out. You might have to run the blender a couple of times. So again, as you can see, this is really beautifully uh, <clears throat> smoothed out from the blender. Got it smooth as silk. It's just great looking stuff. Then I have the pita crisp out of the oven, some with the sesame and some with the olive oil and garlic salt. So we'll put a few of these. And of course, vegetables are perfect with this. Then what I like to do to serve it is with extra virgin olive oil, drizzle just a little bit over the top because it adds a little bit more depth of flavor. We need a little green for color. And doesn't that look lovely? Now I think I have to try it. Because even though I tried it separate, let's try it like that. Mm. Heavenly. Heavenly. And you know what? I might have this. If you notice when I cut the pita bread, I did not take it apart. It's nice thin pita, which I prefer. I don't like the thick, that's just me. And I left it together. In other words, I didn't separate, I didn't open it up, and then put it on the baking sheet as is because they're perfectly golden brown and there was no need to separate. Plus you can get more on the sheet tray this way, but God, aren't these lovely? I have to try one with a sesame seed just because I love sesame seed. Mm. Sesame seed, that's a nice addition. That's a really nice addition. So I do hope you try this because it's really not that hard. And another nice thing about hummus is it's nice to have around for a snack, obviously, but it lasts for quite a long time in the refrigerator without any preservatives. The lemon is acting as your preservative along with a little bit of salt and the oil. Um, this, if you keep it in a cold spot of your refrigerator, should be good for about three weeks anyway. So anyway, there you have it. Hummus, enjoy it, and do try the recipe. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again.